One thing I've noticed that Warzone has always had as an issue ever since the launch was instability. And I'm not talking how the game performs on your console or on your PC, because if you have good hardware or a good console, odds are Warzone has no issues running whatsoever. But the instability comes with the balance of the game and the instability of how many issues Warzone has had. And we've had lots of issues over the past two years within Warzone, whether that comes to hackers or stim glitches or any other sort of game breaking function. And even after all the issues that we've seen, this still remains one of the most popular, if not the most popular game in Call of Duty history. I know technically Modern Warfare 2019 is attached to Warzone, but I think it goes without saying that Warzone has made Call of Duty the most popular it's ever been. There has been hundreds of millions of players who have played worldwide on Warzone because it's free to play. And for myself personally, I have had so much fun on Warzone and the thing that sucks with the inconsistency of the game and the instability is the highs are high and the lows are low. When Warzone is functioning as intended like it is right now, where I barely see any hackers, if not any, the guns are pretty balanced and there's no like one shot DMR to the head like there was back in season one of two in the Cold War integration. The modern warfare guns are extremely reliable right now, as well as the Cold War guns aren't, aren't overpowered. I'm having a lot of fun with the game and I have no issues whatsoever. But the thing is, is even though I know there's no issues now, I know that there was plenty of issues in the past and I'm sure we're going to see a plentiful amount of issues in the future. Let me know in the comment section, as always, down below, what you guys think on the current state of Warzone, because honestly, right now, I don't find it that bad. And overall, in Warzone history, I've enjoyed the game way more than I haven't during like the down periods where it was just impossible to play because of hackers. And honestly, Warzone would be so much better than it is if it didn't have the era of hacking and Cold War instability. A lot of people say that you should have never added Cold War into Warzone, and I agree and disagree to some extent. We all know that Cold War guns are not going to feel well on a Modern Warfare engine, considering that they feel good in Cold War, but that's a completely different engine, so when you port them over, there's obviously going to be issues had there. And on the other hand, I completely understand why adding Cold War is a good thing for Warzone. Not only do you now have the Modern Warfare weapons, but you have Cold War weapons and everything kind of blends nicely into Warzone. So if you have all the mastery camos like I do, you can run Damascus, Obsidian, Dark Matter and Dark Aether all in the same game. And you can use what you've unlocked in those games in Warzone. And with Vanguard being introduced soon into Warzone, not only are we getting a new Vanguard map, which actually looks pretty interesting. We are also getting new Vanguard weapons. I don't know if you guys know this, but if you guys go into custom classes, at least this used to be a thing. It was probably taken out of the game by now. The M1 Grand and the STG-44 were seen in the Marksman Rifle category and the Assault Rifle category, and they were listed as Vanguard weapons. And it's no surprise that Vanguard was going to be integrated into Warzone. We've been told about this forever now, but I've seen some people say, well, it's going to suck having Vanguard, Cold War, and Modern Warfare weapons all in the same game. And sure, it might make creating a class a little bit more tedious because you have to scroll through a whole catalog of weapons. But at the end of the day, why is that a bad thing in Warzone? Sure, balancing, I understand. It's going to be hard to balance Cold War, Modern Warfare, and Vanguard weapons. I'm sure when Vanguard launches, there's going to be some weapons. Let's take the STG, for example, where the STG could just be miles better than everything else. And we could see a DMR, FFAR meta like we did during the Cold War integration. And I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. But on the bright side, you will be able to use any gun that you have unlocked and leveled up from all three of the Call of Duty titles in Warzone. So if you're a huge fan of the MP44 from Vanguard, and you also want to run the AX50 from Modern Warfare on the same class, you can do so. And that's amazing. Like, never in a million years did we think this would ever happen in Call of Duty. Like, that's like the equivalent of running the ACR from Modern Warfare 3, but you could also run, like, the Ballista from Black Ops 2 in the same class but in with modern weapons and that's that's like that just blows my mind for call of duty and if you guys don't know the developers in charge of warzone are raven software and 
they are like the only sole developers of Warzone right now. Of course, Infinity Ward helped build the map and do all that stuff, but they handed it over to Raven basically to support and update and take care of the game. So we can put a little bit of the blame on Raven here. However, I'm sure that there's some Activision play in here as well where things went wrong. And, I'm, and we all know that Activision is the main fault for no anti-cheat. But let's look at Raven for a second. If you think about Modern Warfare and Cold War, they're doing all the seasonal updates and content. What's Raven doing with Warzone? Well, they might have done the new Warzone 1984 map. That's great and all, but ever since that map came out, there hasn't seemed to be a lot of support and balance to the game. Uh, realistically, all they have to do is balance weapons and then maybe do a couple map updates here and there and then change some playlists weekly where Treyarch and Infinity Ward are constantly making maps for the seasons and adding new guns and doing all that stuff as well. And I'm sure Raven does have some help and support from Infinity Ward and Treyarch when they're implementing those specific games into Warzone. But it seems like Raven's almost doing nothing some of the time. And I think at the end of the day, when I play Warzone, Warzone doesn't feel any different from the Cold War integration. Like the map plays the same, nothing's super like drastically different sure there's red doors now and now downtown has been destroyed but other than that there's that th those are the main things that i think of when i think of the warzone update so i don't know if raven's just putting all their time and effort into the new warzone map we'll have to wait and see for what is it november 6th 5th some sometime early november when warzone comes out with the new map at the launch of vanguard so we'll i'm assuming that's what they're putting all their time effort and resources into right now they could even just be putting all their time effort and resources into an anti cheat we honestly don't know and warzone seems stale from time to time and it doesn't change as often as you would think it would with live service updates and it's a very odd case but I have to say, me and my friends have been playing Warzone almost every day for the past week. And we've been having fun every single day, just having fun in Verdansk, dropping in, maybe getting a win or two and losing the rest of the games. And that's what the game's all about. Like, I've had so much fun, even when I get kicked down and say, like, I come like second place or third place and I come so close to the win. You think that would like normally demotivate people. But with Warzone, I think all of you guys can agree with this. With Warzone, it is just extremely fun just to get back into it and have a good game. Sure, there's times where you die off the start and then there's times where you die in really dumb ways, but there's also times where you absolutely just dominate the lobby and have a really good time. And it, it, Warzone is so up and down and it's a roller coaster. Like the experience of Warzone, straight up, full on roller coaster all the time. There's never one moment of Warzone where it's been consistent for me. And that's also where it ties into the consistencies too. It's just the like the type of game it is it's a battle royale that relies on a lot of variables in game whether that's variables for looting or placement rotation it is just all variables and inconsistencies and that's the game and that's probably where a lot of the nature of the problems come from within Warzone itself. It's just inconsistencies across the board, good and bad, right? Like there's goods to both sides of it. But I would say for right now that Warzone's in a great place. I really wouldn't change much. Of course, maybe I would change some of the balancing and just some of the locations on the map. I tend not to go to and avoid just because I know people are just going to be camping there 24 seven, but you just avoid those. And I'm extremely excited for the new Warzone map and to see everything integrated into Warzone once again. A lot of people are saying now from leaks and rumors that it's going to stay on the Modern Warfare launcher. So we're going to have to launch Modern Warfare to play Warzone. I was hoping that it was going to launch and switch off of the uh, Vanguard launcher just because you know, Vanguard map, all that fun stuff. But I understand that Warzone is deeply rooted into the Modern Warfare's code. So it'd be pretty hard to put it all into Vanguard, which is maybe what Raven's doing and why there's not that many game updates in the game. Anyway, that's it for today. Use code WILD for gamer subs 10% off. Help supports me, help supports the channel. I'm about to head out. If there is one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.